been a bit of a long time since I've done anything 3D printing related. So when this company reached out to me, I thought I would give this a look. This item is called the Structure Sensor from a company called Occipital. And effectively what this does, it attaches to a tablet, as you may be able to see there, made for the iPad. And it'll work with the iPad mini with Retina display, the iPad Air, and the fourth generation iPad. I think it'll also work with the iPad Air 2. You just have to have a different attachment for each of those. And effectively what it does is it attaches to your iPad and acts as a 3D scanner. But first let's go ahead and just unbox it and take a look at it and we'll get it hooked up to the iPad and see what it does. But here at the top you have a little bit of a getting started user manual kind of thing. Here's a cable to attach it. It's lightning connector to this connector that I'm not familiar with, but I would assume that this goes into the actual sensor. There's a power brick for it. it has a little barrel connector on the end and it mentions there it does 7.5 volts at 1.5 amps. There's a couple of little bags in here with a bunch of screws and a teeny tiny screwdriver. I'm guessing you're supposed to affix this to the actual connector you'll use. And finally, this is the actual sensor itself. There you go. This is a, a I really actually like this color. It's kind of a, a neon blue. On the back it mentions structure sensor and it is a class one laser product. So this is gonna be doing laser scanning of basically whatever you point it at in an effort to turn it into 3D models that you can print out on a 3D printer. Now, as you can probably guess, this is not gonna be able to attach to anything the way it is, you have to actually have a bracket to attach it. So they sent along this bracket as well. This is the structure sensor bracket for an iPad Air, which I do have here. And inside of this box, which has a neat little magnetic seal on it, you have this little bracket. And if I had to guess, I would say that this actually slides in like this. You put four screws in the back of it to hold it in place so it doesn't fall out. Then you slide it over your tablet and kind of clip it into place like this. All right, that went together fairly painlessly. Once that's all said and done, you simply attach it to your iPad. Basically, you end up fitting it over the camera, but then you clip it into place and you've got a nice, solid, stable 3D scanner. You do have access to your power button here. It's got a little button attachment and the volume rockers and the mute switch are still all accessible. And if you wanna go ahead, you can connect the lightning cable to their connector. We'll push this in right here. There's just a little bit of a, an insert, a divot there. Push it right in. It's just long enough, almost exactly long enough to fit here on the iPad Air and it's all connected up. Taking a, a quick look at the Getting Started Guide over on the Occipital Structure website, it mentions that once you've done this, you shouldn't actually have to plug the power connector into it. I'm gonna keep reading just to see if there's anything else to it, but at this point I should be able to just install the app from the App Store and get started. And actually I just happened to notice when I plug this in, it says the app is not installed. Do you want to install it? That's very cool. So I'm gonna go into the App Store and it pulled up a bunch of potential apps for it. But according to the site, this is the one I'm gonna need. It's called Structure, so I'm gonna say Git. There we go, it is installing the app for me. And it says it would like access to the camera. So we're gonna go ahead and allow that. And it is seeing things. In fact, you may not be able to see that because of the angle, but it's actually seeing me. There you go. So this doesn't require any sort of external power source. It looks like it mentions how far away it is from things. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take a little time. I'm gonna try this out and get used to it, try to scan some things with it. And I'll be back with you in just a second. Okay, and it is actually, it's months and months later. I just have not taken the time to finish this review up. So I'm gonna do that today. As you can see here, I have installed a bunch of different apps that work with this sensor. Of course, you've got the original structure app that I was looking at before. We have IR, depth, and depth and color. You can see just how far away things are by where we move. I'm on this really weird little shoulder mounted rig, which should make this a little easier to do. Over here in the corner, you can see the firmware version, the serial number and the battery level. That app, not terribly useful. You have the calibrator over here, which you can use to actually, as it would say, calibrate the sensor. I've already done all this before. Now, these are the ones that are a little bit more interesting. Now, the scanner, I haven't gotten it to work quite right. I haven't spent a huge amount of time with it, but I just haven't gotten it to work quite right. But just as sort of a, a quick example, you point it at an object, and you can kind of see that gets surrounded. It's sort of highlighting the whole area that it's going to scan. So the camera is actually going to be scanned with that. And we'll even turn on a high resolution color option. So if I hit the scan button now, you can see it's building out the object that it's actually scanning based upon the whole movement of the 3D scanner sensor. If we move around, we can get more pieces of it. It says we're too close to it. And yeah, like I said, I haven't had a huge amount of luck with this so far. So I'm gonna move on. That is kind of the whole point of this thing is to do something like that. Here's just what the result was of it. It didn't get much of anything, but I didn't spend a lot of time doing it. So it's very cool that that is an option that you could do that and then make like 3D models that you could print out. But the things that I've been doing with it that I found a little more interesting are things like Room Capture. And the Room Capture app basically does this. You see I'm standing here in my office. If I hit the scan button, it flushes things out with a green framework as it were. And then as you move around, it scans the room. Look at that. So, you know, we'll just look up a little bit. We'll go toward the window, we'll go down toward the floor. 
don't mind the mess. There's a lot of it. And then we get the walls. And you know, I'm, I'm taking this very, very quickly. You could actually spend a lot of time and really build out your space using this. Not exactly sure what this is gonna be 100% useful for, but we'll hit done. And there you go. There's just a very, very quick, oh look, this is a 3D movable space that I just created with the 3D scanner sensor. There's an x-ray view where you can see all of the points that it created. There's a top-down view. If you've done the entire thing, you can move around it like this. There's hole filling, which tries to fill it out with the parts that are missing. So like all these little white specks, it tries to fill in. And it kind of actually did a pretty decent job there. It left a big section here because that's so far away it couldn't really capture it. But there's other parts that it filled in quite nicely. So that's a really cool option. I just, again, not really sure what it's going to be hugely useful for. Because most of this kind of thing, other than getting you the depth information, most of this can be done with a panorama on Android. Probably on iOS as well. But either way, it's, it's a cool feature. There's a fetch option, which is an augmented reality game. So basically you say scan. See, it's picking up this area here on the floor. We're going to make it a little smaller. We hit scan and it's scanning the floor. Problem again is that where it's trying to track it, maybe it's just I don't have enough light in here. Make it a little bit brighter in here and see if that helps. Hit rescan and then scan and it is scanning the area but having trouble. But when it does sort of work, you can see it, it does a little bit of an augmented reality game. It's just I didn't get a good scan on this. So you can move the guy around to pick up the balls in space and you see it looks like he's moving around on the floor. So that's kind of cool. Again, not 100% perfect, but it's a neat option. And the thing that I found the most cool about this is this Star Ops game. Play the mission briefing and then skip it. It goes through this whole video that we just don't even need to watch. And now that it's done, there's a Start Mission button. And you can see we are in a room. And there's a bunch of stuff going on in the background in the audio. I'm going to leave all that out. But then as we move around, I'm walking around the room. It says, walk onto the red pressure switch. Okay, we've walked onto it. Now it says, pick up a block. It gives me a grab button. So as I get close enough to it and get my little reticle over it, I can hit grab, pick it up, move it over to something else, and actually walk over to it and release it. And you see it opens the door over there. Now I can walk over to where that door is, or I can hit the warp button to take me there. And then warp again. And then warp again. And I played a little bit of this last night. There's not a huge amount to it, but it all involves you moving around in your environment and doing things. So for example, I'm going to pick up this cup. I'm going to interact with the environment. Oh, I knocked something over. I'm going to get some coffee in my cup. There we go. I've got coffee. Mm, I'm going to drink the coffee. Blah, blah, blah. And then, oh no, there's liquid plutonium. Let's get a little liquid plutonium. Oh no. What did we do? It's pink and goopy. Let's put it into this machine. Blah, 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 blah. We'll just pour it in. And that did something. And you see it's all steaming and all doing something now. So you can actually pick up the gun and shoot things. And this is just based upon augmented reality and interacting with the world using that. That's so cool. There's more stuff you can do to it. I just haven't made it terribly far yet. But that is honestly one of the most fun parts of using this so far. And that's probably about as deep as I want to go with this. I haven't spent a huge amount of time testing it to see how the battery life is, to see how well it works. Just going to be real honest with you, it has not really been a need for me. It's a really neat option, but it's kind of an expensive one. If I remember correctly, the last time I looked at it, it was $300, and it primarily worked with iOS devices because you had to have this bracket. Since that time, I've checked again, and it looks like they've made it available on Android as well, but you do have to buy a separate breakout cable for it that'll go to micro USB and you have to figure out a way to mount it yourself. So it's not going to be the best option for Android guys. For iOS, if you pick up the one that has the specific bracket that you want for your device, it's going to get the job done. It's really just going to depend on your needs there. For me, this is not necessarily a need and I am going to have to send it back to the company. But you know what? I think that's going to wrap things up for me for today. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed a little bit of this video and we will see you again in the next one.